not going to be acceptable that I raise a bratty child. So, um, you know, be cool. Be nice. Uh, treat others the way you want to be treated. And this is where the direction comes in, is this golden rule, right? To treat others, it's all very simple. Children can understand these teachings the way that you want to be treated. So how do I want to be treated? Well, how don't I want to be treated? You see, it's not hard to put two and two together and say, okay, I get it. I, that makes a lot of sense. So we are to love God above all else because this is the source of every good thing that we've ever experienced, including the day we're born. Okay, and everything from that time on, all our five senses, our ability to recognize beauty, to smell something that smells beautiful to us, to hear something that sounds beautiful to us, to say something that other, other people find beautiful to them, to taste something that tastes beautiful to us, these five senses, to experience life, to experience joy and peace, and gratitude these are all values we all should behold to seek to be content to seek to be free to seek to be out of fear to be secure and to bundle all these things together to discover to attain overall happiness knowing that there's one grantor of that happiness and that's our owner that is God Almighty who loves us beyond our wildest imagination. And we need to convey that message to other people. We need to relay that, to let people know. So if you spent your entire life wandering this planet, just letting souls know what they mean to their owner, how much he loves them and treasures them, okay, you would have spent your life in as important a way as you ever could. Okay, that's it. That's it. You are going to receive vast rewards for what you've done. Not only in the hereafter, this isn't all just about being goody two shoes and doing the right thing in this life for the hereafter, you know, go oh, up because I'm going to go to heaven. That's my motivation, that's the incentive why I'm a good, decent, upright, moral, ethical human being. And, and doing these things as a servant, as a willing servant, as a friend of God, my owner. No, you're going to reap rewards in the here and now with gladness of heart, peace of mind, joy, doing the right things. There's a constant relationship going on that we can all tap into. It's there anyhow. We're all recipients of it, whether we're cognizant and aware of it or not, that we have a God that's not distant from us, but that's living within us as we welcome him in, okay, to guide us, to counsel us, to encourage us, to comfort us, to sustain us, to give us all the things we need, not only to survive, but to thrive, and to find that elusive happiness that we're all really after at the end of the day, you know? That's it. And we're never going to find it by not caring about our fellow human beings. This is probably the hardest challenge there is to, to wake somebody up. To, you know, we've got to knock them over the head with this understanding that this is like science, I'm, I'm talking, like osmosis. That because we are, as human beings, inextricably interconnected to one another, intertwined. Our welfare is intertwined. And there's nothing any of us can do, even though... The carnal part of ourselves wants to divorce ourselves and separate ourselves from other people's problems, saying, look, <coughs> do what I did. You know, if you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth, you might say, well, you know, I guess I was just more blessed and lucky. And, you know, there's a lot of people because that's how it's measured success and all these things. And, you know, finding happiness is tied in with success at our career and making a lot of money right it's all about money this world and it's just the truth is so opposite we've got to understand that this thing we that we exalt above all else in this world money the success 
as a way to key and path to happiness is actually contrary to what God tells us. That this is really to be seen as a competing God, one that competes for God's love and affection that he, only he is worthy and deserving of giving that kind of affection and attention to. But yet we all strive for it. We all love it. We all know it. We, and only those that are liars wouldn't confess that they love money. I mean, come on, guys. I mean, don't you have like having a few disposable bucks in your pocket to take your girlfriend out to dinner? I mean, come on. Come on. Without that money in your pocket, okay, so you love the money because of the power it gives you, okay, so confess it. God already knows. It's no secret to him that we're money lovers. We need to confess it. And we need to get over it. We need to understand that everybody wants money, right? Okay. And what is money? Okay. It is a very powerful entity. Is it a commodity? I mean, we say, no, it's not a commodity. What, what is it then? I mean, we say, well, it's a more sophisticated form of bartering, right? Well, is it really? So in other words, if if I have a printing press and paper then, and ink, then I am, I can make my own commodity money and you just say, well, this is money. It's what that's what money is, a commodity, right? You know, gold, silver, any fungible asset, stocks, bonds, okay, Bitcoin, Money, any whatever form it comes in, it's it's money. It's it has a lot of inherent power, right? But is it a commodity? Is it just a tool for bartering? How how does this thing work? How how do you play this game? Because that's what it is, after all. At the end of the day, it's a game that no other creature on earth has the burden of having to play this game. But it's crammed down our throats from birth, and it's a very rigged game. And people have very very definite and acute misunderstandings, misgivings about what it really represents and how powerful it is, what a powerful role it plays in every aspect of our reality, every aspect of our lives. Money is there, okay, to infect and affect our every waking moment. And it ought not be this way. So how do we reach a state where it isn't that way, where we render it less and less relevant and still have all the benefits that we derive from money, namely prosperity? Because prosperity is something that I firmly believe our Father wants for us to have. It's very natural that human beings have over thousands of years with accumulated knowledge developed easier and easier methods of producing all the things we need and want. This is the whole idea of make our lives easier, okay, more luxurious, more enjoyable, more pleasurable. And this is okay. This is a normal growth offshoot of being made the image and likeness of God and having this great, awesome potential to develop methods of producing and manufacturing, creating and supplying all the things we want and need in excess, in abundance, in superfluity. It's very normal, and God understands that, and that's a good thing. And we've done that. At this state of the industrial age, there's plenty for everybody in the world. We could end poverty around the world tomorrow. There's no shortage of all the things that are required to absolutely end, stop poverty in its tracks around the world. Crime would plummet. We'd see huge advantages. The social welfare industry would plummet. Dubious warfare would plummet. The, the need for the debt industrial complex, the financial services industrial complex would plummet all these things overnight. Do you understand? We'd reap huge benefits and would render these satanic powers as competing God irrelevant in short order. Do you understand? Because nobody would care. Everybody would have plenty of money. They didn't even need to use it anymore. Do you understand? That's the reality we could have. And that's something that nobody can dispute. Nobody can argue. That is a matter of scientific, provable, mathematic fact. Okay? And that's a big deal. I mean, sink your teeth into this stuff. That's a huge realization. This 40-hour work week, this could be a four-hour work week by now. Do you understand? So the biggest challenge we could have is what to do with all our extra time. 
Is that my responsibility to figure out what you do with your time? Remember, full prosperity, universal prosperity. This is really what God wants us to do.